Okay, this is going to be the Phantom Toll Booth, Act 1, Scene 2, Part 3, starting with Paragraph 70. Okay, so the lights dim on Talk and Milo. So this everything's kind of going dark. Um, and come up on King Azaz of Dictionopolis, another part of the stage, on another part of a stage, okay. Azaz has a great stomach, a gray beard reaching to his waist, a small crown, and a long robe with letters of the alphabet written all over it. My apologies, my dog is whining. Okay, so he kind of maybe looks like a little bit of a wizardish thing. Um, so Azaz, of course, I'll abide by the decision of rhyme and reason, though I have no doubt as to what it will be. They will choose words, of course. Everyone knows that words are more important than numbers any day of the week. Okay, the math magician appears opposite Azaz. The mathemagician wears a long flowing robe covered entirely with complex mathematical equations and a tall pointed hat. Okay, so he might look like a wizard too. He carries a long staff with a pencil point at one end. And so basically it's like a cane that looks like a, eraser, a big giant pencil as an eraser on the end. Okay. Mathemagician. <clears throat> That's what you think, Azaz. People wouldn't even know what day of the week it was without numbers. Haven't you ever looked at a calendar? Face it, Azaz. It's numbers that count. Don't be ridiculous. And he's, he's kind of facing the audience. He goes, let's hear it for words. And then the math magician goes towards the audience as well. And he's like, cast your vote for numbers. A, B, C. One, two, threes. A fanfare is heard, which means like clapping. And then to each other. So down they're like facing each other and they're saying, quiet, rhyme and reason are about to announce their decision. And rhyme and reason appear. Rhyme says, ladies and gentlemen, letters and numerals, which are numbers, fractions and punctuation marks, May we have your attention, please. After careful consideration, which means thought, of the problem set before us by King Azaz of Dictionopolis, and he bows, and Mathemagician of Digitopolis, and he raises his hands in a victory salute, we have come to the following conclusion. Words and numbers are of equal value, for in the cloak of knowledge, one is the warp and the other is the wolf. I don't know what that means. It is no more important to count the sands than it is to name the stars. Therefore, let both kingdoms, Dictionopolis and Digitopolis, live in peace. Okay, and sound of cheering is heard. Azaz says, boo is what I say, boo and ba and hiss. Math the magician. What good are these girls if they can't even settle an argument in anyone's favor? I think I have come to a decision of my own. So have I. So they look at the princesses. You are hereby banished from this land of the castle in the air. So banished means they can't ever come back. You have to leave right away. And then they look at each other and... As for you, keep out of my way. And they stalk off, so they walk off in opposite directions. Okay, so now during this time, the set has changed to Market Square of Dictionopolis. Lights come up on the deserted square. So the square is just the a part of like a town where a lot of times people gather. So they're in Dictionopolis. Okay, we're having a conversation with Talk and Milo. Ever since then, there has been neither rhyme nor reason in this kingdom. Words are misused and numbers are mismanaged. The argument between the two kings has divided everyone and the real value of both words and numbers has been forgotten. What a waste. 
Why doesn't somebody rescue the princesses and set everything straight again? That is easier said than done. The castle in the air is very far from here, and the one path which leads to it is guarded by ferocious demons. But hold on, we, here we are. A man appears carrying a gate and a small toll booth. So the gate's um, keeper goes, Ahem. this is Dictionopolis, a happy kingdom advantageously, advantageously located in the foothills of confusion. Okay, let's see if I can. Confusion and caress by gentle breezes from the sea of knowledge. Today, by royal proclamation, it is market day. Have you come to buy or sell? Okay, so let's go back over that. They're at the gate to get into Dictionopolis. And he kind of just is like, welcome. He says this is a happy place um, where they're kind of where confusion is meet, met by knowledge. So I, I have a hard time explaining this, but wherever this is, it's, I don't know how to explain it, honestly. But it's market day, and everybody's getting ready to go to this market and either buy stuff or sell stuff. So Milo says, I beg your pardon, buy or sell, buy or sell, which is it? You must have come here for a reason. Well, I come now. If you don't have a reason, you must at least have an explanation or certainly an excuse. Milo, and he's meekly, he's like, kind of like embarrassed. Uh, no shaking his head very serious you can't get in without a reason thoughtfully hmm wait a minute maybe i have an old one you can use okay an old reason this is very odd he pulls out an old suitcase from the toll booth and rummages through it nope 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 this won't do hmm milo talk he's to talk he goes what is he looking for and talk shrugs Ah, this is fine. He pulls out a medallion on a chain. Engraved in the medallion is, why not? Why not? That's a good reason for almost anything. A bit used, perhaps, but still quite serviceable. There you are, sir. Now I can truly say, welcome to Dictionopolis. So basically, his reason for coming, going there is, why not? What else do you have to do? Okay. He opens the gate and walks off. Citizens and merchants, merchants are people who are selling things, appear on all levels of the stage, and Milo and Talk find themselves in the middle of a noisy marketplace. As some people buy and sell their wares, which is whatever they have out, food, things they made, others hang a large banner which reads, Welcome to the Word Market. So it's word market okay talk look merchant one says hey uh, hey uh, hey uh, step right up and take your pick juicy tempting words for sale get your fresh picked ifs ands and buts just take a look at these nice ripe wares and wins merchant two step right up step right up fancy best quality words here for sale Enrich your vocabulary and expand your speech with such elements, but such elegant items such as quagmire, flabbergast, or upholstery. So he is selling fancy words. Okay. I didn't know you had to buy words. Okay. We're going to keep going with this. Um, Merchant three. So this, this is the third place. Words by the bag. Buy them over here. Words by the bag. For the more talkative customer, a pound of happies at a very reasonable price. Very useful for, okay, we'll go back to the picture in a minute. Happy birthday, happy new year, happy days, or happy go lucky. Or how about a package of goods? Always handy for good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and goodbye. So here is a picture of the market. So this guy is the one selling if, ands, buts, wins, and wares. This one's selling the happies. Okay. This is so bizarre. 
Okay. Milo, I can't believe it. Did you ever see so many words? They're fine if you have something to say. They come to a do-it-yourself bin, to the merchant for at the bin. Excuse me, what are these? Okay, so I'm thinking this might be the do-it-yourself bin right here. Okay, these are for people who like to make up their own words. You can pick any assortment or buy you like or buy a special box complete with all the letters and a book of instructions. Here, taste an A. They're very good. He pops one into Milo's mouth. Okay, so he's eating a letter. Okay, Milo tastes it hesitantly. It's sweet. He eats it. I knew you would like it. A is one of our best sellers. All of them aren't that good. You know, the Z, for instance, very dry and sawdusty. And the X tastes like a trunk full of stale air. But most of the others aren't bad at all. Here, try an I. Okay, so Milo, he's tasted cool, tastes icy. Merchant four, and he's talking to talk. How about the C for you? As the, as, it's as crunchy as a bone. Most people are just too lazy to make their own words, but some, t but take it from me, not only is it more fun, it's also more delightful. And he holds up the letter D. Um, elating holds up the letter E and extremely useful and holds up a letter U. Milo says, but isn't it difficult? I'm not very good at making words. All right, well, I'm going to stop there, and we're going to start with this next, the spelling bee, um, for the next one.